DC. Yes, DC yeah, did Banner in yeah. the third, fourth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is what we were saying, right? Lycan. Pick Mason, either Sven or Lycan. It seems like the formula is there. Yes. DC, no doubt, are going to be feeling very happy with that opening, too. Now, I bet yeah. having a pretty solid game indeed last match on the puck. Yeah, he had a little bit of a rough start. He did. I they mean, got, we, they put a lot of emphasis he, on they pun did. punishing he, him. He was though. getting chronoed, yeah. getting Mystic flared. They used like everything on that poor guy. But uh, yeah, later on in the game, was able to play very elusively and hard to get, despite the way the execration built to try and get those catches. They still yeah. couldn't quite lock him down. Leech banned out from DC. Makes sense. Very obnoxious for Lycan for that split push and just in the nature of the lanes can be very annoying, especially with the Venomancer. Like Venom Lich just sounds super toxic to play against. Yeah. I mean I mean it means that Lycan as well doesn't have to go for that defusal blade build if he doesn't want to. Yeah. I mean it may still anyway. We've been seeing it yeah, we've been seeing it again some of the times. But yeah. now it's we're back to the Necro book build. We right? are, that seems Mask to be the flavor. Necro yeah, book. RTZ is pretty much what doing it every game. Yeah, burning was Mason did it. Yeah. yeah. Necro book build is the build at the moment. But really targeting four of Execration here in the third, fourth bands. So the Bat Rider and the Enigma, two of his most popular. And yep, DC takes out the Sven. They know better. They have a Lycan themselves. There's no way they want to play Lycan versus Sven. It's one of the best heroes to deal with him. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, well, where have Execration been playing the, the Venna? Do they put it in the mid or do they have they been doing it safe lane? I think they've been putting it in both roles. Are they, I think one of the games yeah. they ran it mid and one of the games they ran it safe lane. Okay. You want to say? Yeah, I can actually, maybe. Say that I almost feel like they ran it. So they, do, they didn't do an off lane penny like I, I think some they of the other teams did. Uh, I'm trying to remember if they had. No, they didn't. They ran it safe lane. They ran it safe. Yeah. Okay. Checking just him. I thought like I thought I'd seen one. I did see an off lane. They oh, did they, run they, it. On they did do the off lane. It was one of them. We have seen what a few teams. I want to say at least three teams do the off lane Venom. Yeah. Yeah. Did they run it with? It was just a pure offlane, the okay. one game from them. Yeah, and that was the game that they actually ended up losing. But they do have variety, clearly, that they do. Yeah, I guess the same could be said for the Sand King. Yeah. Expected to be their support, but could also hold up a lane on his own. See what they're, they're going to pick up here is this third pick. It's going to be the Shaker. First shaker of the day for us, yeah, even though he was any. getting picked like every game. And oh, that's, uh, th that's no hesitation yeah, by DC. That's a strong one. We saw how good the globals were last game. Yeah, when you so have so hard to play against. When they have some type of clear cut initiator, it seems like DC just. A lot of teams do. They really like just having the silencer. For that, like puck just jumps in, global goes off, and then like and just runs in and cleans up. Similar concept as the Sven. Dragonite again, being grabbed up for execration two times now, back to back. This time though, it's different. This time they have the Venomancer with the Dragonite, so they have that like heavy push. That's Ooh, that's, that's four Evs hero. That's a good hero as well. Or, this game. I guess that could still be Abed's. They could still run it mid and put the puck off lane, which is a better, much better matchup. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I think that's gonna the be Abed. It's gonna yeah, be Abed. That has to be it. Yeah, yeah you're right. Definitely would love to see Arbe playing that this game. Yeah, he can. I mean, that crushes the Dragonite. Yeah. Puts so much pressure on DK and then puck. You're you're gonna you're gonna you're sacked puck. You're not playing puck. This yeah, already so looks like a pretty nice, pretty decent temper game. There is a lot of lockdown though. Sanking, Earthshaker, Dragonite, all having stuns, and they all have magic damage inside of them too. So timber can take a decent amount of damage, but it is three strengths. DC aren't one of the sides to do the support puck, are they? Uh, we haven't seen them do it. We're not seen I DC wouldn't. Do it. I wouldn't think that they would, especially they now with the silencer. Okay. It doesn't. Nah. Ideally, maybe like. If you have like a real reliable lockdown, then I could see where the puck support could work. I know EG ran it, but I don't remember exactly what their draft actually was with it. Ten Check and find out what they actually ran that support puck with, I just mean, curiosity. Execration, of course, it's indeed expecting it to be core, so just ban out that support uh, spirit. It's the most likely that DC will still be looking forward to finish up their draft. And well, considering the heroes, Execration still with that flexibility of where they want to put the Shaker. I feel like they should, the Earth Spirit Band, they should know that it's going to be like Dubu playing the Silencer though, and Bulba's, Bulba's hero is the one that's missing. Bulba does not play Earth Spirit. That's the Bulba hero right there. Spirit Breaker. I don't think that they could have thought about banning that one either. That one's a little bit different outside the box, but it's another fight starter. So they have the Puck and the Spirit Breaker as the fight starters to follow up with the global. 
do I secretion finish this off with? Got to be super aware, yeah, but this timber spirit breaker in your face hero is someone that's going to be able to deal with that. But it's it's going to be pretty hard. DC are really going to be up in the faces of execration in this game. Yeah, this this is either their off laner or their safe lane, depending yeah. on if they put Raging Potato off. Okay, so it's actually going to be what the it's safe lane Venno, yeah. Safe lane Venno. Yeah. It is going to be safe lane Venno. I meant oh yes, I meant secondary support or uh, whatever. Raging Potato, yeah, the off lane Shaker James again on that mid lane DK. So Manalik looking pretty strong here versus uh, both the Lycan and the Timbersaw. Can be super obnoxious for both those guys. Blinding Light as well, very obnoxious for Lycan. And they actually have like D push and a decent five men if they're able to get the Coddle Ags at one point. The Dragon Knight with Coddle and Venomancer, they have a pretty good push window that they could go for. And now this time they actually have he heroes that can push lanes out fast. Coddle, Dragonite, Sanking, all these heroes push lanes out quickly, so Execration will be able to take better fights this time around in comparison to Lord. Indeed, Abed on this mid timber saw. Other than the Keep of the Light, a lot of reasons why this man can have a good game. I guess there they, they are like three stuns, but damage he's going to be able to do to some of these core heroes is. It's oh. going to be really hard for them to Did you just see that? They just swapped. Potatoes playing Dragonite. They Knight. just swapped. And James is now playing Ape Shaker. Is that them saying that they really don't want to have that DK against the Timber? But <laughs> then you're putting a Shaker like against the Timber, and it's it's not much better, is it? It's a bit better. At least you have magic. And you have some stuff, but the damage is still there. Yeah. All right. I mean, are they sticking with Let's this? We'll see. see. And Potato is playing. Yeah. James, safe lane. James is going mid. Safe lane DK. Safe lane DK with an aggro. Is it going to be an aggro tri lane with Venomancer and an Earthshaker mid? It looks to be it. Guess. I'm the not sure. Lane guess. DK. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what, what's DK going to have to deal with on the side lane? It's it's going to be what the off lane. Puck, and I, I guess that's, that's obviously the matchup we saw last game in the mid lane. I, I guess, but Puck, Puck should farm. Fine, bottom. Puck's going to get a lot. You're playing versus a poor man shield DK, so you won't be able to harass him, but Puck's going to get a lot out of this. Lycan, at Lycan should be punished, though. But maybe we'll just see the swap up. We'll see Lycan and we'll see the same thing that happened last time. Lycan and Silencer make their way bottom, while Puck makes his way top and farms versus Venomancer. Interesting decision from Excretion. I mean, obviously DC, uh, you'd imagine, would feel more confident coming out of the draft as they are the ones that forced Execration to adapt in terms of who's playing who. I mean, Raging Potato, you know, when you're, you're sort of solo lenders playing the TK, you just, uh, I mean, I wonder how much he's played it, you know what I mean, in, in terms of competitive games. Probably not that too often. Lane's going on at the moment. James actually doing, doing all right here in these early levels against our pit. So we're getting the CS. Top lane, Nando forever. 3 4 against the 1 1. So Nando coming in with a slight lead here. Takes control of this 1 versus 1 lane. 
see how much farm Raging Potato actually can get out of this spot at the moment. It's just a zero CS. Not looking too shiny at all for him. Okay, so it seems like it's saved. Sorry, we, we seem on. to have like an observer issue. Apologies for those mistakes. Yeah, James is farming well in the mid lane though. You know, with that high level of enchant totem, he's able to actually always get the last hits. And you can put a little bit of pressure until Timbersaw gets level 3. Now Abed is level 3 though. Doesn't really take too much damage from those enchant totems. And he'll be able to bully James a good amount now. Overall though, these lanes kind of up and down. I guess the fact that okay, yeah, Forever's catching up a little bit, but Nando certainly does have the lead up here. Bulba's trying to do something about this. The fact that this Venno is getting that much with this rotation. And uh, James is keeping up really well with this mid lane. Arbed yet to really bully the, the Shaker out of this lane. It's, it's not bad at all. The, these matchups that Execration have managed to get aren't too bad at all. Just this bottom lane, really, where the DK is suffering. Abed's eating heavy harassment. That 2-2 yeah. two -two build in the Enchant Totem and Aftershock. It's... The thing is that the, the Earthshaker has such better mana sustain. The Enchant Totem's only 30, while Whirling Death is 70. Abed, though, building into that Soul Ring soon. Still last hitting fine. Eight to, uh, actually, dead even in the mid lane. They're both harassing each other just about 22. Abed does have the extra bonus of the Howl, of course, for those right clicks. The two points from reactive. It's going to be a little harder for, for James to keep up the damage that Arbed's outputting that. Yeah. You can now maybe expect to see Arbed take a bit more control of this lane. Yeah, the multiple points in the Whirling Death, too, start to add up because you can, you know, the stat loss actually lasts for 14 seconds. So not only is your damage reduced because you're a strength hero, but you can also get that secondary Whirling Death off for extra damage as well. Also, only now finished for Abed and forcing that lane. That's also the thing is Abed can push the lane in a little bit harder than James can because of his skill build. So right now, DC winning all three lanes by a slight margin. Bulba starting to stack up. Doesn't really have any charge opportunities. They're looking to claim bounty runes. Dublu takes. Takes one, Bulba as well, and then Lumic at the top. Just looking to get that rune bottom. It's got a bottle, but Bulba and Dubu in position. They could actually. They, this looks like it's James dead for sure and here. It looks like it is indeed. He's been pinched and in. And the bash. That's going to be a Give him another two. one. Oh, oh, oh. Uh oh. I'm, no. No, he's got another no, charge. He's got, he's got arcane bad. rune. Yeah, he's got arcane rune. He's not getting out of this. And the two supports are going to get it too. Unless he gets the suit. He gets the suicide. Oh, kitchen. if he gets the suicide. Oh my oh. god. He gets the int. He does get the int still. But. But. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Well, now the charge coming out onto RR. Don't think they're going to dive for this one. But those are efficiency charges right there. It's an arcane rune. Now, of course, there's lots of time as well that James is out of this bit lane. Now we're getting into the space. Lumit's going to come in and try and pick up some of the solo action. But it, that is the uh, shake around of the game for a little bit. Can now straight towards the mid lane. Or eating a lot of harass at the top. That'd be back to his tower. But Arbed is is now level six, so this is where James has to be kept. Definite kill potential out from the timber now. Yeah. And yeah, level three reactive, they can't even really put too much harassment on him. Boba getting into position with Dubu. That same exact time rotation. Last game was 5 minute 30. This game 5 minute 30 again. Looking to go aggro on James here. The charge coming in. Abed should be able to clean this up quickly. First blood. Oh yeah, that's first blood. Yeah, quite a quite a slow start. <laughs> Finally coming through and did that five and a half minutes. Yeah. And it's the, and it's night time, so the double benefit from how they have so more health from trying to go for those plays. They didn't need it much that time, but just in case. Yeah, spot bottom lane where Raging Potato is catching back up to Mason. In terms of CS, I Mason's down here alone for a while though, and he's just been farming. They can't really push him out of the lane because they kind of have like the same thing going on. They have the two points in Dragon Blood, and Mason has three points in Feral Impulse, so they both just have like regen versus regen for days. And that mid tower, this first catapult with that first rotation, that nighttime rotation with the first catapult, they are. Gonna, looks like they're probably gonna get this tower into deny range. One more hit from that catapult, and yep, it's in deny range. 
So that must be why DC likes to do that five minute smoke. We see, I see some teams do it at 4.30, I see some teams do it at 5.30, I see others do it later on, but DC seems to want to be doing it on that first catapult wave to try to get not only a kill, but also a heavy objective damage. So they did. It's a very smart move. Venomancer level six, about half a, half a level ahead of 4F. But he is susceptible to dying as the Venomancer up here. The rotation is coming out both from Dubu and from Bulba. They get vision of him. Bulba does not have mana for the charge, though. Do you see him? They do place down a lane ward, so they're going to be able to go for that type of kill. So five more mana. And that's, I mean, Nando is definitely dead here. They drop the coil for this. Not holding anything back. DC are in. Yeah, I'm going to see Lumic turn up, but he's not going to be jumping in on that one. Abed posted up on mid. James actually gets the deny. He may pay with his life here if Abed's able to get the proper Chakram here, but no. James is way too wary with that juice. Lumic is there on the side. They do have Echo. Is it enough damage that I don't it's think it would be yet? He's got the max reactive. Already has the 20 stacks. That HP regen is too much on top of the armor. Very hard for them to take down Abed. James really has to watch himself here. He's, he's actually just dead. dead. Oh, they've got the, the Whirling Death though with the charge coming through. Yeah, he's dead. Still with the stat reduction from that initial Whirling Death. I mean, Abed Timber still definitely one of his finest. Yeah. And uh, we're seeing it here. He's got a pretty nice lane mid against the Shaker. Any sort of strength melee hero that you're pinning up against Albert Timbersaur is not going to have the best of times. I mean, to, to be fair to James, he did get the farm, but we're seeing now. You know, one, one step out of place and your life will be the cost. Top lane potato. He's all the way up there alone right now, trying to pressure that tower, and he is isolated by three heroes. James is coming in from the back, though, but decides not to. They accept that potato is going to die here. It's another plus two for Dubit. Already up to plus eight so far this game. Involved in every kill. Lumic or... Smart heads up from Forev. Straight oh, yeah, with the TP out from the sidelines. Nearly found him there, the same. close. Bottom lane, Nando. Chased down by Mason. Plus the stick charges. Oh, the Jukes. Nando, oh, with the wall block. Oh, doesn't oh. matter. Our bed's there, chopping down trees. They get Oh, goodness. It's already 3k lead for DC, and we're only eight minutes in. Yeah, they're stepping up the pace early this game, Digital Chaos. Yeah, tier one tower already being cleaned up, too. Mason and free farming. All three cores free farming. Secretion's got to do something for damage control. In terms of CS, it may be looking good for the the shake about overall net worth. It's just yeah, this is the difference. I mean, Abed. Abed's gonna have such an early bloodstone, and he even went for I mean, very smart kind of thing. Goes for the casual cloak just in case. Yeah, because they do still have a lot of magic damage. No DK form up online now either. Still, 30 second cooldown. He used it before. They're trying to steal a. Dual camp stack, at least here, and now they're just making their moves all the way toward top. They want to be able to at least claim the tower. Everyone's heading up there for James. Lumic. So Mason will be building toward that Master Madness build that we do see so often, and Bulba is continuing just warding, getting very deep ward. So he sees everybody top. He has a deep ward bit and also sees bottom where Lumic is standing. So they may actually even contest top as well since they see where the Sanking and the Earthshaker are. They know it's only three heroes top at the moment. Let's see if they do decide to make that move. Yeah, Potato trying to come up with the ult, yeah. but indeed there's the TP. Enough. Abed wants to hold this with Dubu and Forev. They get a Dream Coil, they can certainly go for it and they'll drop it. They see Raging Potato straight in, the Chakram goes, passes through onto two. Cross comes out from Keeper of the Light, but Raging Potato getting new down low. Just have the Dragon Tail to hold Abed back a little bit, but he Timber chains forward with the jump forward. And forever as well. That'll be another kill. But digital chaos. They're doing everything so far. Like DC's pressuring. They take two tier ones. They're even defending all their tier ones. They're making all the right moves. And next creation's just struggling with their very, I mean, pretty unorthodox lineup. They're running a DK safe lane and an Earthshaker mid versus the Timber Cells. Up, DC just has a lot more. Yeah. I mean, that that really is the thing. Is what we saw. Obviously the. The switch around, trying to get that Dragonite away from the Timbersaw, but you're only dodging that matchup in the laning stage. You know, at the end of it all, it is a carry DK against a core Timbersaw. Yeah. It's like that, that matchup is never going to be good despite dodging it in the lane. And even the, the, they dodge the lane, but they still yeah. put a Strength Hero versus yeah. him in the lane, so he's, like, he still does incredibly well. Bottom lane, charge coming out. 
Gets the stun off though, so he gets the charge. Now Mason coming in trying to get some cleanup, but yeah. Find either target with that. James coming in. Yeah, I'll bet still on track to get. You mentioned it. Really, really quick timing on the blood stuff. He just, he just free farming these Venom Wars. In. He doesn't care. Free, ar free reactive armor. Oh, creep stole the CS. Creep stole one. <laughs> Report. Oh, they may find Bulba here. Couple of stuns. He can charge his way out though. Bye. And he's gone. Nice epicenter. Oh, and a regen. Says. Ah. Puff! <laughs> the dream. So no more Epi. DC has everything online if they want to get super aggressive, but I don't even think that they really need to. They've claimed two of the big towers. You know, the safe lane tower and the mid tower are the two most important towers on your side of the map. You get so many access points to farm and to pressure. DC very happy now. Mason just mask of madness. He's like, all right, time to farm jungle. He's got the armlet queued up this game rather than the necro book just yet. Very content with this. He can just farm while Abed pretty much does everything for him. Creation. Trying to continue that siege up top, but very hard to do with Abed. Yeah. Pretty much impossible. Dragon Knight, Raging Potato, safe lane DK. He's trying to farm jungle, but that's not. This isn't really what you want your Dragon Knight to be doing. As a Dragon Knight, you want to always be hitting the towers. This is why we don't see you DK safe lane is because he's not really your traditional hard carry. He's your mid who pushes when the enemy when the enemy mid laner leaves the lane he takes their tower but he's a safe ta hey safe lane DK and now yeah, this is gonna get messy as well they'll find Nando no way he gets out DC I mean it's seven and zero I don't know Matt but from the draft and from the way they laned it I wonder if even execration and looking at what they have and going well, what, what, what do we actually do can with they this win lineup? at what, any point what, that's what I'm thinking how do they how do they kill people how do they I didn't even go about thinking about winning the game with this sort of draft that they've been forced into by DC. It, it, it seems like they've been out drafted now, getting heavily outplayed. Yeah, I think it's it's definitely a situation of both. And it's execution, like they needed these lanes to go super well for themselves, but now it's like they don't really have anything. That, what's what's their game plan? Yeah. Like what do they really want to do? They want to be able to group up and they want to hit towers with DK and Venomancer, but they literally cannot versus DC's lineup because this Timbersaw does not care. And neither does Forev. Forev has like a 10 minute blink dagger. Oh, he, he might have got a little bit greedy here. And uh, yeah, he can he get out? He's got face shift. He looks pretty dead. Yeah, he's out of mana. So there we go. Hope that they there overextend. Forev messed up and he will pay the price. And James does have the blink dagger. So maybe they can find a big Wombo, Epo, Echo, Epi. You know, they've got all the big team fight ults. That's true. That is true. But Abed does pretty much have that bloodstone. Yeah, he's a gold it. and the, the bit boost is there. They were walking through Ward Vision, Kato and James, so they know that blink is online now and they're starting to charge already. Echo off the mark and now a global follow up. This is going to be I mean, Potato I think he dead. killed a wolf, but that was it. And now Raging Potato, he's gone and James, James well. is paying the price as well. Another strike from Bulba comes in. Two more for DC. And, uh, you know, I say they, they got to land the echoes. That, that was not landing the echo. A couple of creeps and a wolf. Bloodstone now out for Arbet. 15 minutes in. They are looking completely disconnected on Execration. Looks like five five players just doing their own their own thing all across the map. Lumic has Blink Dagger bottom, so maybe they'll be able to contest this, but I don't think so. Way too deep, especially without Echo Slam online anymore. They're charging up the Illuminate. Huck Orb is gonna scout Lumic. They see the sanking now, he has to get the hell out of there. But he gets coiled up. I just give me TP now, they do cancel the TP, fine. I was gonna say. Some space for Nando up top. It's gonna get charged upon. Boba on his way from base. And uh, the tier two there, they could TP to help him. No, Nando's gone. Nando will get out. Nine to one, losing tier twos at this 15 minute mark. It is looking incredibly scary, oh, but they're gonna get Dubu. Dubu. that's a freebie. Trying to get some wards up, but spotted by the Radiant Ops and the Execution. He tanks the gank, we'll say that. I don't think they were trying to gank, but he'll tank it anyway. Two boys trying to get those deep aggressive wards down. The Bloodstone finished up, as we were saying. They're looking straight for the Lotus Orb as well, so 
that mana leak. Get rid of that mana leak, reflect all these different stuns. Be super nice. Remove Gale. And all in all, you know, Mason continues to farm. Master Manus. We'll while. see where it goes now. Do you think maybe now he, he does pick up the Necro free or does he just pick up the BKB and look to fight it? As we said, there's a lot of team fight. I think BKB, BKB is be, fine. Yeah. yeah, I think BKB is just the safer route. I think he can go the book if he doesn't want to just straight team fight. He may not even be needed in the team fights, is the thing. Abed could just be the team fighter while Mason just goes for full split push with a book. It could be a possibility. He might just be. They may be talking it out and deciding it still. I mean, they're in such a massive lead. It's only 3,000, but. It's, it feels infinitely more because it's safe lane Dragon Knight. Radiant scan. Trying to see if they're trying to dive through behind this tower to get the Coddle. It is successful, but now, uh-oh, charge coming out onto James. The coil's oh, there. Yeah, they've got the lockdown onto him and the global coming out just before the fish is dropped. So no chance for a response from James. Check it down for 40 seconds. So up, Parbet, Timber chaining himself away. DCR actually going to try and wrap around and see if they can catch some members of Execration on the way out. Lumic is already out of there. DC will be able to get themselves in position, take another tier one, and again, no. DC very good at getting these deep walls down, keeping they can keep this siege. map control. Okay. Continue the siege. Ah, uh, they know that everyone on the side of Execration's back. The thing is that, that's the thing, is Execration does have a lot of deep push with the coddle of course it's super hard to push it then the dragon breath dk now raging potato actually used the elder dragon form to try to find something there with his shadow blade but plenty to find any opportunity and now the wolves scouting out execration they see exactly where the dragon knight is they already have vision of the mid lane so now they know exactly where everyone in execration is so, you know, you see under no threat to the farm Boba going straight for the BKB next. And yeah, Mason's still yet to spend. So, you say almost certainly just determining with his team what's going to be best this stage. Yeah, maybe like they, they may not even need anything. They win a fight. He just buys the Necro book. And maybe even goes for like, I don't know. It's a little crazy. The Deso, we used to see it a bit. Just goes for the Roche, but yeah, maybe I mean, the, maybe Echo Saber. He does still need some oh banner. Yeah, true, true. Echo is certainly. That was the old kind this. of build we used to see. I yeah. think I, I think it might just be the book this game. No, just maybe even the AC. Yeah, if they do want to get something for the push, he's got options. Just say that. And they go for the smoke. They've got global up in 15 seconds. Don't know if they really need it so much, but okay, they do see everyone posted up in the mid lane. They just saw Dragonite. Invis up with the Coddle. They see Nando, charge coming through. Let's see what Esther Crash can do in response. Now the strike to bring him back. Raging Potato trying to come in from the back lines, but instantly and he cursed up and silenced up. That's just safe lane DK gone. He just he just like walked and died. He just walked and died. And now DC off the back of those two picks. They'll take a tier two. Now maybe even find something down bottom. James and Lumic trying to get the tier one. With the push, James will TP out in time, and Lumic does escape. DC won't quite get the tier 2 for now, but clearly still maintaining this lead that they have. Veno goes for the mech build too, so trying to have some sustains. They do have like the DK kind of push lineup with the Veno, but they don't have a scaling lineup. Their lineup actually is such an early game team compared to DCs, which scales super hard into later stages. And Mason, Mason has started to invest now. The so it is the BKB. That's the safest one. We thought maybe he just goes full out YOLO because they feel pretty safe in this game. Still just going safe. Mason the Rock. Very, very hard game for Execration hit. Keep it Lights almost got Aghanims, about 1200 gold away, so that'll just give him sustain if he does ever get that, but the fight is still just not good enough from them. And he's dead. Bulba, Arbed, catching him out. Starting to rack up those Bloodstone charges, now up to 15. Mason, sends it away from the BKB completion. Not gonna head into the pit. Taking him one down, feeling that they have the space to do so. And uh, definitely, the situation that they do. Unlikely that Execration can do anything to stop this. 
even though it's not necessarily the quickest of Roshans. No, no. But it's, like it's a safe one. They've got Arbed tanking it up. They're not going to get low. Mason wasn't using the Master of Madness. He doesn't have to, he's not popping the Howl either. He's doing, he knows that they have no, no threat of doing it. He doesn't have to rush it. Now he pops the Howl. Push it off fast, a little bit faster. Yeah, Execration is like showing everyone on the... Or the big playmakers and everything on the map. DK and Earthshaker was showing bottom. So that's all the information DC needs to do pretty much whatever they want. Mason actually takes the... Okay. That's different. As far as I've seen, I've seen still play, most players taking the 12 strength. He takes the 12 feral HP regen. Okay. I mean, he's got 22 HP regen now. 34 total. Pretty damn high. I guess pretty nice what's out there. HP regen maybe against the, the damage over time from Venom stuff to offset it. Yeah, because he has an armlet too, so yeah. he can offset it a bit. That's, that's a good point. I haven't really seen anybody go for the regen over the strength because I mean, 12 strength on a strength here is pretty damn high. True, yeah. It's 240 health, 12 damage. Just gives you a lot. You get a HP regen. 0.3 HP regen. Still the 7k gold lead. No slowing down in the progress of DC. Get mana leaked, but... I mean, even if the whole team's there, very hard for them to actually bring down this timber. There's loads of sorb and such. They are smoked up execration. Looking for some sort of jump towards the mid. They woo, throw they have to it use all everything. down. Yeah, I think that's. They should always be echo slamming yeah. single kills like that it, when they're at this much of a deficit. Because they're not probably making anything happen. So now they're actually with the game. claim an objective. They claim their third tower of the game. DC? And this is one of their first aggressive moves of the game, though, that they actually make. And it is a big kill. Who got the credit for that? It was... Raging Potato. Raging Potato. He's, uh, I mean, he's Silver Edge first up. I mean, it'll be okay versus the Timber, yeah. but... The thing is that... The Silver Edge is... The thing about Silver Edge versus Timber is... You have to get it before he has the reactive armor. So that's because if he already sure. has the 20 they stacks, stay. then they stay. It doesn't yeah. do anything. So it can work, but... It's still, you know, it's still a safe lane DK versus a timber saw like before. With first time silver edge at 25 minutes. Or so. Yeah. It's very well not like not super slow, but it's you know, it's slow. Yeah. And he may be in trouble. They're smoking up and they're heading his way. Potato. Can you get out of this one? I don't know if he can Perevs there with the setup and the yours. Oh they didn't quite get the vision and the dream pole down. But they do still get the connection with the charge. And with another sentry place, they'll find it a little a little scrappy from DC, but they get the kill nonetheless. And uh, I should get a bonus D ward out of it. 14 to 3. Another tier 2 falling in the middle lane. Lumic trying his best to push this wave out. But it still continues to look very grim for Execration. Not been their series today. Cardinal's about to have Aghanims. Maybe somehow they can play around that with the heal. Thing is that that is one of the big windows. You know, Cardinal Ags is no joke. It can't actually make everything much easier by Dubu. Oh, <laughs> right next to Dubu. <laughs> James actually almost accidentally the enchant totem with the him. Aftershock. He almost got him with the Aftershock by accident. Dubu knew. I, I guess Dubu saw him. But, yeah, right. Still... So very close. Opting to TP very close to <laughs> and knew where he was standing. So the diffuser will be the next choice by Mason. Still, okay. just it's like one of the best damage items, the best way to close the distance too. Just purge somebody. It's pretty much like a, it's not really a stun, but they can't really run away well. Nando. Ending up with the wards. Model Aghanim's finished up, so he's always got Blinding Light and Mana Leak whenever he wants to. And same thing with the Recall to bring his teammates around. They're actually going to take Nando out of there. Bring him back to base. They saw 4 of setting up. Let that tip go. No way they can defend this. 
pushing high ground is still like impossible. Versus Ben O'Connell. Yeah, they need to get kills outside of the base for sure, DC. Yeah. Or they could just brute force it at one point. I mean, maybe not now. They do still have Aegis, but they have global. They could just like, Huck jumps in with global and they just go for crazy dives, but I don't think it's the time yet. They have to make sure that their lanes are good. There's no point in taking that risk when you have this much of just yet. Hey, just gets reclaimed. Back to farming. How's James doing? I mean, after that blink and yules, it's, it's just going to be a BKB. Making sure that he has a chance to get his spells out in his team fight, but even then, Mason obviously with his own BKB. We've been mentioning soon to have that defusal complete. Potato takes the 40% experience talent this game. Last game they took the 40 damage on the DK, but this time he feels like he needs to, he needs He's to got hit to level 25 yeah. really fast in this game to really be a force. So now Gem picked up by the Coddle too, so with that Aghanim's Daytime. He definitely at least looked D Ward. But 30 more seconds till night, and that could be when we just see DC actually try to take an engagement, maybe smoke up and take a fight because they have Lycan for the double help benefit, and they still have every ultimate ready to go. And of course, the Coddle eggs won't be working at that time. Abed looking to force something on bottom. James is there. They get the charge going on him. Link is on cooldown for eight seconds. Going to chase it though, TC. Shackle won't connect, and that will put them off from from going for more. Top lane bit of split pressure put on by Lumic. Just have the TP ready to come back if needed. DC will see how hard they want to go in with this push down bottom. Ready to go. Got to watch out for these big ults from the high ground, James. You might just down force the it watch. with the BKB on Mason and the defusal now. We're trying to force the bit. Try and go in there, but now and there's the response with the global, the dream coil onto two, trying to force Raging Potato back to safety. He's using a fair few of the rolls, not losing anything too much. Nice James echo. comes with the echo, does indeed grab two, but Arbet, in the chains down, Mason moving forward with the BKB and the ultimate form, not quite enough damage to kill off Execration, so Execration do hold. Both teams throwing a fair few of their ults out there. In fact, pretty much everything apart from the epicenter being used. But Execration get DC away from their base. Yeah, it's still like impossible to break high ground. Well, not impossible, but you can see how difficult it is. Venno Wards, Coddle, some of the harder heroes to actually push versus. So they need that next Aegis. Aegis and Cheese will make it a lot easier. And if they can ever find pickoffs. But that Ags Coddle with the gem is making it difficult because they can't put down good wards, so they can't play around the wards to get pickoffs. Spurper can't set up as, as easily. Limit top. Oh, some pressure onto Mason. Yeah, DC, yeah. Boba has dust though, and yeah, Lumic is now dead. Boba just with the perfect, perfect positioning there. Peak dot. Greaves out. Tananda. Full Greaves, okay. Well, he can remove the silence now from himself to get himself in a good spot to put the no poison over, but... Does not do a whole lot just yet. There's a lot of damage though when he hits level 18. I bet. Right, working his way towards that Octarine and he, you know, level 22 still. Absolutely massive. Hasn't died at all this game. 65 HP regen at the moment with 15 reactive stacks because of that hood, Octor er, hood at Lotus and his passive talent, 14. Because the hood just, it's just really so good this game. There's very little ways that Execration can offer. He's got the right clicks from the DK in his dragon form. That's nice. That's it. You know, he's got no damage. It's just a silver edge and now he's going to BKB. That is literally all they're... pretty much invincible, are they? Yeah, I think so. I actually don't think that they can bring him down, even if they isolate him. I think if they isolate him at five and they have the silver it edge on the I think if they use everything, they might be able to bring him down. But if they don't have the silver edge, I actually don't think that they can kill him. Especially when he gets Octarine, because he's going to get so much healing from it. And a cheese on top. Oh yeah, there's no way they kill him. I think Abed could actually just be Timber chaining past the tier 3s into the tier 4s and not really have too much concern. Yeah, you can tank the fountain. I don't think the fountain so much, but maybe only. 
He, he could try. DC. Once again, ready to fight, ready to rock and roll. Yep. Oh, man. oh he's trapped in here with them, or are they trapped with him? James is only picking the second. 72 HP. Oh, they actually got most of his mana down at least, but he has a lot of blood charges. Do you see they're just blaming the sour? Execration needs to do something. There's like nothing they can do. There's just nothing they can do. They have to watch their tower die. They can throw some spells at it, but slowly but surely that tower is getting pulled down. Five seconds till daytime. Now we'll get Mason at least once. Pop in the Aegis. He's gonna have BKB up for round two. James looking for the control, but Mason gets the chance to put the BKB in the ult as well with the Defusal Blade now turning towards Nando. Dream Core drops down onto the Venno. Still DC back off. Mason bailed out hard as the BKB was used. Didn't want to commit. Chris now trying to chase a little bit. James still has the Echo Slam. Can he get any sort of a jump? Jumps to the sidelines, oh, finds nice Dubu. Nice global, but yeah, he's going to hold this life anyway. They've got the Yules up. Oh, he's got the Glimmer Cage. Do they have detection? Yeah, they like they need it there. They've got it on him. Burrow strike comes through. Dubai left behind, so Dubu will go down. Still a lot of damage done to that tier three, but Execration are slowing the pushes down. Small gains. Little tiny gains. Yeah, it's as soon as it hit daytime. Lycan pops the BKB, pops the ult, hits one person, and then sees that it's daytime Coddle, and he literally just bolts the hell out of there. It's just too much to deal with the, the sustain, and mana leak plus landing light is just way too much. You have to wait for that nighttime. It is a little risky. Who actually did, did anyone can use the cheese? They don't see them. I guess so. They I must, must have, have used the cheese. Yeah, oh, yeah, you see, giving it to someone else, yeah. Hey, someone must have used it, yeah. Arba's got the money for his octory now. Continuing to be insanely ahead of the game when it comes to farm. Yeah. It's still going to take them a bit to be able to siege, though. Same thing. Coddle, Coddle Vandal, DK, or Shaker. Very hard heroes to push into. Now Boba though, this is, has a BKB of his own. He's got a charge going on. Who's it on? Is it just on the creeper? No, it's actually on the Venomancer. He's committing as well. Yeah, he's got BKB. He's gonna play around with Nando. Nando has got some backup. Rangy Potato's there, but there's Arbev with the bigger backup. Jumps forward, shots down Nando. They did drop the coil for that. But uh, a oh, no, oh, the James. Echo's completely off the mark. Oh, James. Bye. BKB's TP is out. I mean, Rangy Potato will get away. But uh, no, not the echoes that they need. Ouch. I mean, even if it hit, it probably wouldn't have made much difference though. But uh, it does mean he hasn't got it for this potential yeah. defense. I think that's the big thing. I don't think he should use it in those type of opportunities because yeah, it's not like they can get kills out of that. The be best kill they get there is Bulba, and that's not really much. And now there's no echo for the high ground, and there's no dragon form for the high ground either. And there's no Venom for 30 seconds. Yeah. Silver Edge hit. Hey. No. No, he's not gonna die. They have the howl still. He has Octarine too, so he likes heals from everything. Our bed's gone. Split going on from Lumic down in this bottom lane. Creepway shoved around. And Execration will have everyone back up. The shrine's being taken. Mason working his way to getting the AC complete. This game really has not shifted flow from the start to the right now, 35 minutes in, it's really been DC maintaining a lead, not necessarily shooting incredibly far ahead, but it's just the fact that they are ahead, and, and with the two drafts in mind, you know, Execration have just left themselves with very little options. Yeah, pretty much. They don't really have great, like, like we're saying over and over again, oh, emphasizing it constantly, is their late game is just not there. No. They don't have a physical damage dealing core, their objective is Dragon Knight. They've gotten all the tier twos and everything, but or most of the tier twos, but they haven't left their side of the map in quite a long time. DC now smoked up, they've got global, they've got everything ready to go. This is going to get messy. Bulba straight in with the charge. Onto our oh, oh, silence comes in onto both of them. The That's perfect the kill. gone. They can look to get more now that that pesky mana leak man is out of it. Yeah, escape off the the Venno, Raging Potato tries to get the BKBTB, but indeed the Bash is there. Raging Potato taken down as well. 70 seconds, no DK. No Coddle for 30 either, so yep. they can now force that high ground, and it turns into nighttime. Perfect timing for that double Howl benefit, and let the siege begin. 
maybe more kills as well. Are they playing around with Nando? Yeah, he just he's he ain't afraid. So they've got Sanking and, and Echo Slam, or Sanking and Earthshaker position in the smoke. Here we go, charging it up. Well, they're blowing everything on Mason. Can they kill him off? He's dropping low, but the hell he heal. Limit Capes as well, backs off. That's the Camille of the ults. Does not get the kills that Execration need. Zabed just stands between the, between the racks and between Execration, keeping them off. Huddle's back. Spam a good amount here. It's not daytime though. Oh, Mason does get stunned up. Does still have the ult ready to fight. Charging in goes for James. James is down. Dream Call connects onto Lumic. The stun's there. Bulba looking for the bashes. Has the Nether Strike to bring it back. Lumic down as well. Buybacks now coming out from Lumic on the Sand King. Can Execration get anything out of this? They do stun up Bulba, but Bulba still has the BKB. Walks it off. I mean, DC, they, they don't get any of the melee racks. So, I mean, Execration aren't killing DC, but they're certainly making this game go very slow for them. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this game is inevitably pretty much over. I think they're just kind of like trying to stall them as much as possible, but yeah, DC now have deep wards in, and for the next pushes, they will be very ready yeah, to what, Three those. wards in the base. Yeah. Look at that. Was that even any buybacks from them? That was just the Sanking just buyback, Just the one right? Sanking buyback, I believe, yeah. Huh? They've got armlet now on DK. They got, got armlet. <laughs> He's got his 37 minute armlet. I got armlet, boys. Cho's still trying to put up a, as much of a fight as possible. Bottom lane now sanking, isolated. Venomancer is also charged up. They're probably going to lose both of these guys. Nando and charged. I bet up to 23 charges. And now also with the pipe. So the pipe will help them at least see better. Not so concerned about the not a concern, just not being able to get slowed down by the Caudal Blast or Venno spells. Go. Siege begins 48 seconds, no sanking. Venno has to buy back if need be up. And it's still still nighttime, so there's no Aghanim's heal from the Caudal. Oh, up to up Mason. They have the change to no, there's gonna be the global silence coming through. Nether strike from Bob as he jumps up to the high ground. Look for James. James getting bashed up. James is gone. Turning their attention now towards Raging Potato, who's trying to man up onto Mason. Gets the stun off Glimmercape. And not actually gonna save Mason as the sentry is down. Mason falling incredibly low. Die has gone. They do get the kill onto Mason, but execration have already lost two. Get anything more? Break it onto Arbed. With Mason gone, DC will be forced back. I mean. That's a pretty massive kill for Execration. Lots of money going to Raging Potato. But I think anything more. They're looking towards Forev. Can they get Forev out of this? He's going to blink up to the high ground. But Nando's there prepared for him. They'll get the stun connection. They'll take Forev as well. And that's the gem that they stole before. Oh, actually, that's Bulba's gem. I think somebody else is holding the other one. Or it's at base. Yeah, the only one's at base. I mean, if DC managed to lose this game, I'll be incredibly impressed. There's no way. I, I, like, I still don't see a way for... Execration to push push all the way out. Their heroes just naturally aren't do not scale like DCs do, but they are getting some nice little windows. You know, they're slowing down DC siege every single time. They're just Mason unable to really focus down the buildings. Pretty calling coming up from execration. Potato in position. Maybe they're gonna push on his up. Are they gonna try for a rush? DC scans it out. They know that they're in the pit. It's not no gonna Mason be a very for... quick rush on either. He's up in five seconds on Mason. Cuff's dead for 20 minutes. Abed is gonna be the problem here. Abed can just walk in. It's daytime though. So they do have the extra heal and sustain, so they will be full. Do they really get away with it? That is the question. Lumis gonna stun up Abed, but indeed Abed comes across, throws down the Shad Cram. He is out of mana. Uh, do you get the chain stun onto Bulba? Trying to bring Bulba down. James does have the Echo Slam available. Arbed keeping them at bay, making sure that James and Lumic can't get the blink in. Raging Potato looks to mana up onto Mason, forcing Mason to actually back off from this. Come back in from James. Damage, definitely the limitation here for Arbed. They do have an epicenter. Forever dropping the thing and phase shift dodges the echo slam. James getting silenced up by the global. Arbed now turning it to move back in on this. Mason beating into Reggie Potato. Reggie Potato revealing himself out of the silver edge he, as he comes out for a hit. It costs him his life. Arbed with the Shakram slowing down Lumic and Nando. Mason moving forward. They've got the Shiva's guard. Nando down. Three dead for 80 now. That must be it. Finally, DC 
look to being able to get the, the potential to finish off this game. Just by brute force. A very rough one indeed for Execration, but they certainly did give it their all with some of these defenses. And at this stage, as, try, as much as they may try, it's not going to be enough as DC just had the much more comfortable draft, comfortable lineup, and they did not have the safe lane DK. Yeah, I think both of these games we can say were. I, I don't like always saying like it's a straight out draft. I think DC did out draft them. DC got way more comfortable heroes for themselves, especially in this game, but the outplay is way higher. DC has definitely been making the way better moves all over across the map. I mean, this game was what? 9 to 0 or something at one point, or 2 to 12 or something. Like, it's just them making all the right moves and execration, unable to really make the issues. The lineup is a bit, it's a bit wonky, we could say. I mean, it's a safely DK. It makes it very hard to kind of play around. Throne, the ancient, dying, 2000 HP. Remember, they think they can have one more go. They are, they've got four back up, but yeah, they just tag out. GG, well played, it's cool. DC take both games against execration. As, uh, yeah, I really feel like if you just, you know, looking back at the draft, seeing that Arbeb was on the Timbersaw, you're like, this is a dream game for a Timbersaw, and this yeah. is a dream game for, a, you know, the fact you got Arbeb playing that matchup as well. He was always going to go ham, he certainly did. Ended the game 7 0 14. No hiccups whatsoever for the Timber. I think people should watch out for this silencer. Definitely, they're the so thing. good at using this DC. Yeah, they're. they're time and time again, those global silences. They're super good with it. The first game, I think Execution had a lot of had some chances they just got like we said outplayed yeah. this game around though it seemed like those were just a much harder draft and just super hard to execute with their they had to win like lanes they had to come out pretty hard in the lane so they can group up and push but they can't win the lane impossible to beat certainly is oh dc gonna be feeling good with those two wins under the belt execration falling into a bit of a tougher position as they drop down two more losses for the side rough rough indeed DC looking pretty hot off the back of that. They're going to have some good momentum going. We learned the formula. Pick Mason either Lycan yeah, or Sven. Lycan or Sven. It looks good. It looks I mean, good to me. They are two brilliant heroes. They really, really are. All right, what, what, what are we going to be seeing now? So next here, I believe you will be enjoying the tones of Lyrical and Malini covering IG Vitality versus Empire. Myself and Fog, you can cast... Uh, you can catch, I believe me and... I believe I'll cast you with Blitz later. You're with Blitz later, and I'm some with Shiva later. I'm going to see some more digital chaos. I mean, can these guys take down LFY? That's the question. That's I don't the think so, dude. LFY, LFY looks hot. I don't know. LFY was playing right now, weren't they, against um, one of the other Chinese sides? I'm not quite sure what the, how that one's going down. We'll have to check it out. And then, of course, you're doing the last series, indeed. With Shiva, you'll be casting... Which one is that again? It's, uh, uh, Liquid versus Empire. Oh, yeah, it was a bit of Liquid. Yeah. Be, that would be good fun. That'll good be fun, fun indeed. We saw Reza with some earlier as well, so we'll see if Reza gets that spam back in and can pull out some magic. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen, for this series. Don't go anywhere. Lyrical and Malini will be on their way.